in the past, I just thought there was something wrong with me that I couldn't keep our house clean. And I would kind of brush it off like, oh, I'm a messy person. Oh, we have four little kids. It's not possible to stay on top of it. But deep down inside, if you would have asked me, like, I actually really wanted to have a clean house because I felt like a loser and a failure every single day that I couldn't stay on top of it. And so I didn't know if it was actually possible or not, but I, I tried, like I tried all the different things. And so today I want to talk about how I clean differently now that I'm a minimalist, what finally clicked so that I was able to stay on top of my home. And I'll show you my mishap at the laundromat with trying to clean our comforter. Well, spring is in the air here in Minnesota, so I thought we could do some cleaning together. I'm gonna to tackle the kitchen, the bathroom, our bedroom, and get all the linens and everything washed. I'll show you what happened at the laundromat. It's really a big bummer. But uh, while we're here in the kitchen, I want to talk a little bit about how I clean differently now that I'm a minimalist. So over the last seven years, we got rid of about 80% of our stuff. And so that makes it obviously so much easier to clean. And so I think one of the ways I clean differently now is I'm constantly asking myself as I'm tidying up and picking up and cleaning, does this have a home? So if I'm putting something away, does it have a home, an easy place to put it away? Because we all know that makes it easier. But I'm, I'm also asking myself when I'm thinking about that, like, does it deserve a home? <laughs> like, does this item need to live in our house still? Do I want to continue to manage it and have to put it away again? Like if I'm putting it away today, I'll probably have to put it away again tomorrow or the next day, right? And so I've shared this before, when we were first started decluttering our house, when I would hold something up, I, I would ask myself like, okay, are we currently using this? Is somebody using it or wearing it or will they, you know, for sure in the next six months or year? And that was kind of my initial filter. But then as we got further into it, I kind of evolved the question to say, but could we live without it? And that's kind of what I'm filtering now, even as I'm cleaning, is looking at stuff as I'm putting it away and you know, looking in the cabinets and drawers at other stuff in there and saying, but could we get by without it? Is it possible that I don't need to manage this item anymore? Do we have something else that works just as well? Is this a duplicate? Um, is it something that I thought was gonna be helpful and work well, but it didn't actually live up to it. That's a big one, right? We buy stuff because we think it's gonna solve a problem, only to find out that maybe the marketing kind of exaggerated it a little bit, right? And so as I'm cleaning, I'm, I'm looking at the inventory and the stuff in our house, and I'm really asking myself, like, does this still deserve a spot in our house? And so I get pretty ruthless now because I know as soon as the inventory creeps up, it's over. It's hard to pick up, it's hard to tidy, and I don't want to clean anymore because it's overwhelming. But when the inventory is really low, then I actually can stay on top of it. Now, does that mean our house is perfectly clean all the time? No, not at all. But I do know that I can pull it together super quickly. Like every room is usually only five minutes away from being company ready. The kitchen might take a few more minutes, but most days I, even if there's a lot of stuff out of place, I don't get overwhelmed by it anymore because I know it's only five or 10 minutes dirty, right? And so that has given me so much peace of mind and I no longer worry anymore when, you remember when you would spend like multiple days cleaning and you're like, oh, it looks so nice. Only to like one day later, uh, everyone's lived in it again and you're like, it doesn't even look like I cleaned anymore. It was so frustrating. And so now it doesn't take a long time to clean and it doesn't take a long time to pull it back together. And for me, that, like, that is much more valuable than some of the stuff that we've gotten rid of or donated.
Another question that comes up frequently is if we have a cleaning routine or cleaning schedule. And I'm probably like you, I have tried them all. I have tried Fly Lady, the simplified Fly Lady versions, Clean Mama, um, just everyone out there. And I just, I don't know, for me, it's never been something that I've been able to stick to. And so I clean on an as needed basis. It's when we have pockets of time and when things need to be done. And sometimes I pull the kids in and they help and other times, uh, like right now, I say go outside. <laughs> Anybody that comes back in has to help clean. And so they will happily be outside playing now for quite a while because they would rather do that than clean. Other days, if it's like super cold out, they might choose to be inside and clean rather than go outside. And that's that's totally fine. But I believe that behind the motivation of that question of like, do you have a cleaning routine is how do I stay on top of my house, right? That was the solution I was trying to find all of the time. And I think there are multiple factors that go into this. And that's why there's no one size fits all with it, because it depends on how much time we have, uh, how much physical energy we have, how much motivation we have, what other things are like emotionally and mentally pulling at us because that can totally derail our motivation and how much inventory is in our house. And so for me, I find in seasons like right now, we're in a little bit of a quieter um, time. And so I have a little bit more time. I have a little bit more bandwidth. We've obviously lowered the inventory in our home. And so I'm like, the weather's getting nice. Like let's spring clean, right? I have this the space for it. And it's, it's very enjoyable for me right now. But there have been other springs where that's not necessarily the case, right? And so I think there's many factors that go into it. And so if you've ever been frustrated, like, well, how come that works for them? And it doesn't work for me or why can't I stick with this? It's, it's probably just because there's different things going on in your life right now. You know, those people that are dedicated to cleaning, like, of course, they're going to keep their homes up. That's their job, <laughs> right? But for some of us, that's not our number one priority or number one thing pulling at us right now, even though it's something that we really desire. And so my encouragement, of course, are you already know what I'm going to say, right? Keep the inventory down, declutter, declutter, declutter. And that's definitely what's made it easier for me to keep our house clean. I was just thinking back when I said like there's been other springs it was a year ago um, that I was trying to clean the oven and then Tom decided to take it even further apart so I'm gonna link to that video down below I also tested out a lot of cleaning products on there and they're all still like my favorites so those still are all things that I use but if you just need a laugh today and want to see the fiasco we had with our oven door uh, I will link to that down below as well all right, so I have to tell you my saga with getting our comforter washed. So we have had this for two years-ish now. And in the beginning, I kind of went back and forth because it's so light colored and I love it. It's beautiful. Um, but I was like, maybe, you know, living with a handyman, I shouldn't have it on all the time because I just knew over time it was going to get destroyed. Like even our sheets now, after even after they're washed, not, they don't come perfectly clean anymore which is fine I know there's probably things I could do to get them cleaner but it's fine I'm not that's not me right now the season I'm in right so um last year I took the comforter to the big to the laundromat to the big washing machines because I knew in ours um it, it would be too tight in there and it wouldn't really get clean so I took it there and it got it came pretty clean um and so I should probably do this more than once a year but it was looking pretty like way more dirty this time around and so I'm like okay we gotta go wash it. So I took it to town and I put it in one of the jumbo washers, uh, $10.75. <laughs> Went back when it was done, pulled it out, threw it in the car and came home. Well, it wasn't until I was spreading it out on the deck railing that I realized that there were rust spots on it. And I was 
so frustrated. <laughs> so I need to call there just to let them know. I don't, I'm not gonna try and get my money back. I probably could, but just so they know, like it looks like it's, it had like the circle pattern when it was first, when I first saw it, it had like the circle pattern from like the inside of the washer, you know? So I want to call them and tell them just so other people's stuff doesn't maybe get wrecked in there. And so Tom's mom is a nurse and she had said that hydrogen peroxide takes blood out. <laughs> Sorry, that's gross. Uh, really well. And it does. We have used that trick quite a lot. And so I asked my Facebook group too, I'm like, okay, what do we use for rust? And there were some good like rust remover things, but I don't have any of those here. So I'm like, I'm just gonna try hydrogen peroxide. All right, we're gonna try some hydrogen peroxide first because this is what I have. Um, we'll see if that actually does the trick or not. Wouldn't that be nice if it did? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's going everywhere. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the green, the green from this microfiber cloth is bleeding onto it. So I'm gonna get um, a different color one. <laughs> I'm sure some of you are like, I could have told you that was gonna happen, right? Okay, I got a lighter colored one, and this is an actual like Norwex cloth. So we're pulling out the all the stops now. <laughs> we're gonna try and do this right. Okay, and I'm gonna try and maybe bend the material this way so it puddles into the stain and doesn't run all over. Oh man. Okay, I'm not sure how well you can see this. It is definitely making it lighter. I'm guessing, so, if I would have done it right away, I think it would have come out much better and I probably would have better luck. Um, but it definitely is making it lighter. So I, I, I might spend just a few more minutes on it, but then beyond that, not, not much. Wow. Actually, even as it's just sitting, it's lightening up more. <laughs> I think it's working. Um, I'm going to scrub on it a little bit more and we'll let it dry and then we'll just see how it works. So I let it dry now. I'll show you how it looks now. I actually found a third spot when I was doing that too. I was like, oh, darn it. So it definitely faded it. It's not perfect, but it's it's good enough because it the comforter didn't come as clean this time around either. It's fine. So I don't know how much longer, like, so we'll probably keep this maybe another year or so, and then I might look for something different and demote this to like the camper or something. So. Actually, that's a good idea. I'll put this one in the camper. It's a nice lightweight for summer. I really like that about it. And then I could get a different one for in here, right? <laughs> I know the question always comes up too, like, where do people put the extra pillows from the bed? Like ours are just always stacked in the corner, right? I mean, where else do you put them? If, if anyone has like a super, I don't know, great place that you put your pillows from your bed and your shams and everything, please let us know. But I, does anyone else put them anywhere different? I don't know, <laughs> but I like having them, so it's fine. I know I've talked about this a little bit recently, but I enjoy cleaning our home so much more now that it's just cleaning. So like this, washing the sheets, washing the comforter, making the bed was enjoyable to me because I didn't have to declutter our room first. And so I know many who, if, if you're watching this right now, you might still very well be in the decluttering phase. So I wanna let you know, if you get discouraged because you can't keep up on the cleaning and this isn't enjoyable to you, keep decluttering because the decluttering and getting the extra inventory out is what made it possible for me to keep up on the cleaning. It really is a lot more enjoyable now, which I, again, I, I never thought that would be me saying, I enjoy cleaning it now. And don't get me wrong, anytime our schedule gets kind of chaotic or crazy again, then it goes back to feeling like a burden and like it's really difficult to stay on top of. So there is a balance with having the house decluttered, but also not having a jam-packed schedule too.
And I also want to let you know that we have a small amount of our Declutter Your Home in 15 Minutes a Day workbook still left. They are on spring cleaning sale for $20. So I'll put a link to that down below. We haven't talked about it for a little while. I don't like actually promoting my products, but the feedback has been phenomenal. So I'm so grateful for that and for everyone who has bought it. So thank you for that. But if you haven't gotten a copy yet, it goes room by room through your house and just helps you break it down so you know what to keep, what to let go. And it really gives you a lot of confidence in decluttering so that you can make progress really quickly. So that was my whole goal behind writing this. Um, over 150 full color pages, lots of pictures, um, very interactive. And so my hope is that it can be really helpful for you too. I'll put a link for this down below. Well, thank you for spending time cleaning with me today. It's always more fun when we do it together, isn't it? Did you catch uh, Tom at the door in the mirror? He was like, just, he was like, I don't want to interrupt your video. I'm like, you're already interrupting my video, <laughs> right? Like it's a mirror, they can see you, right? So Tom says hi <laughs> too. He also chose to go outside rather than to help clean, but it's totally fine. <laughs> Again, it's, it's, I don't mind it so much anymore now that the inventory is so low in our house. So I'd love to know if this resonates with you. Do you feel like you need to keep reducing the inventory in your house so that it does become a little bit easier to clean? Have you noticed that in your own house? And of course, any other cleaning tips or tricks <laughs> that you have. I think we're all ears when it comes to that. But again, don't beat yourself up if you tried other people's systems. If you've heard of people are like, this is the best system ever. This will for sure solve all your problems. And it didn't. Don't stress so much about that. Again, we're all in different seasons. We have different things pulling at us. Just set the timer for five, 10 or 15 minutes and just do what you can each day. And even doing that little bit is gonna make you feel better. I love what the fly lady says. Um, she has, I mean, every day she has, or every week she has an anti-procrastination day built in. And she says that, taking action builds confidence and makes you feel less guilty, right? And I'm like, oh, hey man, we all need that. More confidence, less guilt, right? So just doing a little bit every day really does help with that as well. All right, well, I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.